Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. Toyota, the company, is accused of hiding evidence. Toyota, the man, will testify in the U.S. Congress. And a look at more of the new cars coming out at the Geneva Auto Show. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, February 19, 2010, and now the news. It could be a smoking gun or just a disgruntled former employee, but a former lawyer for Toyota says he has evidence the company deliberately concealed evidence regarding rollovers. According to Reuters, Demetrios Biller, who once headed the legal team that defended Toyota in rollover accidents, took 6,000 documents with him when he left the company in 2007. He has since sued Toyota under U.S. racketeering laws, as well as for wrongful termination and emotional distress. Now, the U.S. House panel that is investigating the automaker has subpoenaed those documents, and of course, Toyota denies the allegations. First he said no, then he said maybe, then he said yes. Now, Akio Toyota says he will testify in front of the U.S. House of Representatives House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform next Wednesday. And while that is the correct decision, it is going to turn into a media circus that could either boost Toyota's image or hurt it even more. And this isn't going to help Toyota either. The Detroit News reports that the U.S. Trade Representative, Ron Kirk, says he's still not satisfied with the moves Japan took to make American cars qualify for Japan's Cash for Clunkers program. At first, Japan excluded all American cars, but under pressure from the U.S. government, it allowed a handful to qualify. Yesterday, GM announced it'll invest nearly half a billion dollars to upgrade three of its plants to produce the next generation Ecotech engine. The investment includes facility renovation, new machinery, equipment, and special tooling. GM's plants in Tonawanda, New York, Defiance, Ohio, and Bay City, Michigan will get the investment. We've got some more news coming out ahead of the Geneva Motor Show. Volkswagen just released info about its new Polo GTI. The upgraded hatchback is equipped with a 1.4 liter TSI engine and a standard seven speed DSG. Thanks to a supercharger and a turbocharger, output is 132 kilowatts, that's about 180 horsepower. Fuel consumption is down significantly to only 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers, that is about 40 miles to the gallon. Ford will also make news in Geneva, showing two revamped versions of its C-Max, as well as some powertrain upgrades for the Kuga and Mondeo. The company's refreshed MPV is available in two configurations a five-passenger version, and a seven-passenger one called the Grand C-Max. There's a name for you, Grand C-Max. The seven-seat model features a higher roof line and thinner pillars for more interior space. Both versions share a new HMI, or Human Machine Interface, that should be similar to the My Ford Touch system that we reported on the other day. They'll also share upgraded engines, including a new 1.6-liter EcoBoost four-cylinder. The company's Kuga crossover gets an upgraded diesel engine that's more powerful and more efficient. The Mondeo sedan also gets some underhood upgrades, including a new 200 horsepower EcoBoost 4. Speaking of boost, Autoblock's running this one. Someone over in England swapped the 2003 Focus RS drivetrain into a Transit Connect. The tuned 2 liter delivers 275 horsepower on gasoline or 200 on LPG. That's right, this commercial van was also modified to run on propane. Pretty cool, and I'll bet this is the ultimate sleeper. Coming up next, the experts weigh in on how Toyota has handled its current crisis from a public relations standpoint. Toyota has two crises on its hands. One seems to be a technical problem with its cars. The other is how it's been handling this issue in the court of public opinion. 
On this week's AutoLine Detroit, I have three experts evaluating how Toyota has handled all this from a public relations standpoint. Maria Leonhauser is the president of Franco Public Relations. Paul Halterman is vice president of CSM Worldwide. And Christy Nordhelm is a professor at the University of Michigan. Here's a bit of what they have to say about Toyota. In a crisis, you simply need to respond. And even to say, I don't know, we, are, we understand that you know, there, is, there is an issue here and we are doing our best as our commitment to our customers to, to get those answers and to give, convey them as quickly as possible, you need to say something rather than sort of a, this hands-off approach. But, I think that's, that's been the challenge. But if you, if you do that and you don't have the answer, I think you look even more stupid. And I think that's part of the problem, okay? Oh, do I I'm come sure. out there and no. say, oh, we, well, there's a problem and we don't know what it is, but we're going to fix it. Versus, do you know, we come out and say, there's a problem. Here's our solution. Here's the repair. Okay, they're trying to get their ducks in a row in their normal Japanese way. Again, properly not right. responding back to our culture properly. Right. Okay. No, I respect yeah, that. We have a, but you have a vacuum that, that's been created here. Mm -hmm. There's, there's people. There are people waiting for an answer. And to, to not, if you, if you don't fill that vacuum with your own voice, it will be filled with other people's voices, and that's extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, but you're right to just say we drop the ball and not pick the ball back up again is very, very dangerous. And step two of the process is, of course, to solve the problem in some way, and that's the Tylenol solution, which is, you know, yes, uh, yes, we're pulling all of the all the Tylenol off the shelves, and not only that, we're going to come back with a solution. They didn't come back with that solution immediately, but when they did, it was visible, and they treated more than was their responsibility mm -hmm. to treat. In other words, they addressed right. user error in a mm -hmm. sense with the uh, with the uh, the packaging, the tamper proof, the tamper evident packaging. So. Um, I, I think I have to agree that if there's a vacuum, uh, then it's going to get filled up with something, and you certainly want to control what it's filled up with. And it's think, news, like yeah. it or not. It's yep. news, oh, and, and you need to deal with, with news. You can catch that entire interview later today at our website, AutolineDetroit.tv. Okay, it's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time to answer this week's trivia question. We asked you to name all the car companies that the Volkswagen AG brand owns outright. And the correct answer is, it's Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, Skoda, Bentley, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Porsche, and Scania. And the winner is Michael Colvin from Shreveport, Louisiana. Congratulations, Michael. You just won a World of Outlaws Sprint Cars Xbox 360 video game. And that is it for today's and this week's news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.